Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Cents over spot for any quantity. If you haven't joined over 25,000 new customers by making the switch to SD Bullion, what are you waiting for? You could save hundreds or even thousands of dollars on your next order. SD Bullion, the lowest prices, period. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with FinanceandLiberty.com and back with us today is Alastair McLeod from GoldMoney.com and FinanceAndEconomics.org. Alastair, thank you so much for joining us today. That's my pleasure, Elijah. I'd like to discuss a little bit about the economy and also factors that may or may not affect the economy. I know you've discussed about how the recent Brexit vote in the UK, a lot of people were saying it would be negative to the British and European economies. But your opinion is that it really is not going to affect the British or European economies at all. Did you want to expand on that? Yes, I, I just want to correct you a little bit. I, it's not a problem for the British economy, but be, it becomes a problem for the European economies. The, the British economy, um, I mean, it, it's actually quite amazing. Um, uh, ahead of Brexit, uh, you had the establishment trying to um, tell us that the world would fall down around our ears if we voted for Brexit. They really did come up with the most, um, uh, if you like, inaccurate um, modelling of what was likely to happen post-Brexit. And what's happened uh, as a result is that we had people putting off decisions, investment decisions, sure, um, until they, you know, they knew the result of the referendum. And probably for about, a, you know, sort of three or four weeks afterwards, you know, while things settled down because Sterling took a knock, all markets took a knock on this shock. But actually... Uh, the UK economy, I mean, we've seen figures that have come out now which confirm that, you know, everything's back to normal. We don't have a problem. But the people who do have a problem, obviously, are Europe. Because um, let us just assume for a moment, and I can tell you this is happening, but just assume for a moment that the UK um, leaves Europe and is far better off as a result of leaving the European Union what does that do for the European Union? They then start worrying, my goodness, various other countries are going to start leaving because uh, Britain has um, actually shown that you can leave and survive and, and, and prosper, if you like, without being a member of the European Union. This is something that they really did not think was possible. But it is actually happening. And already we have seen how, um, uh, in the case of of Ireland. I mean, Ireland does something like 80% of her trade with the UK. So she's going to be doing 80% of her trade with a non-EU member, even though she is in the EU and indeed in the Eurozone. We then have the European Commission turning around and telling the Irish and Apple that the taxation basis that's supplied uh, by the Irish government to Apple for the last, I don't know, 10, 20 years, whatever the time scale is, was completely wrong. It's against EU rules, etc., 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 and therefore uh, they've got to t um, uh, tax Apple 11 billion euros. I mean, this is, this is just, this is interference in uh, domestic tax policy, which actually should not be occurring even in the European Union. So you you can see that, um, you know, as far as Ireland is concerned, they are extremely upset with this ruling. And actually, I, I would argue that um, if Ireland decides it's going to stay in the European Union, then people like our Apple will be looking at the UK, which incidentally will be taking a far more um, uh, um, progressive attitude towards tax 
than any anybody, any member country in the EU, is sort of think, well, perhaps we could relocate to the EU. I'm not saying that, they, sorry, to the UK. I'm not saying that Apple are going to do this. That would be a huge stretch of the imagination. But you can see that there are attractions for uh, large multinational corporations to um, uh, increase their investment in the UK at the expense of investment in the EU. And this is all part of the problem that suddenly uh, countries like, uh, like Ireland are beginning to face. We've also got countries like the Czech Republic, who um, before the Brexit vote stated that if Britain was to leave, then we would probably leave as well. So that's the Czech Republic. You've got um, uh, a real discontent in, in Holland with a, um, a right-wing guy called Gert Wilders who's, uh, you know, sort of trying to get, get Holland out of uh, the EU. You have got Marine Le Pen in France. You have got uh, Beppe Grillo in, in um, Italy. I mean, there is, believe you me, there is complete discontent in the European Union amongst ordinary people with the Brussels uh, bureaucracy. Um, it's just not working. And the whole thing is getting worse, also not only from the economic point of view, but from the point of view of uh, the complete failure of policy when it comes to dealing with the immigration crisis. I mean, this week alone, I think Italy has has um, rescued something like, I don't know, is it 12,000 um, uh, immigrants from last Sunday? I mean, these are people coming over from Libya. It's And, you know, they've got, there's, there's no solution that the Italians actually have to this. And they're, 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 they're rather sort of uh, hidebound by um, the regulations within the EU. So the whole of the EU really is entering into the next phase of a crisis. Uh, thank goodness that Britain is, uh, you know, is getting out of it. I mean, we don't get out of it very quickly because uh, Article 50, which triggers our leaving, is probably going to be um, uh, triggered in the early months of next year. And then there is about two years for us to get out. I mean, quite honestly, I think we should get out as quickly as possible. And I think the time scale actually will probably run a little more quickly than um, anybody thinks possible now. Do you see any possibility of them doing a second referendum vote or anything like that to try to stop Brexit from happening? No, I don't see that at all. That's um, there are uh, remainers, if you like, who, who who are trying to sort of push that line, but it's not going to happen. You can forget it. And and incidentally, not even um, they won't even have a chance um, to vote on this in Parliament. Um, that's going to be denied them as well. Now, while Britain will probably benefit in some ways from Brexit, you've also talked about how it really won't change politicians in Britain. You say, quote, no politician, unless he really understands the economic challenge, is immune from the persuasion efforts of those lobbyists and vested interests. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it, it's all very well me getting very enthusiastic about the prospects for, for Brexit. But the reality of the situation is that we're run by politicians um, who are either less incompetent, <laughs> well, who, who are either less incompetent or more incompetent than the, than, than the politicians in, in Brussels. Um, you know, so in other words, uh, we've got to ensure that Having got the opportunity uh, that Brexit gives us, we've actually got to understand what the benefits are and the best way to grasp it. Um, if you're talking about, uh, you know, sort of, if you like, the, the, the normal run-of-the-mill British politician, they don't necessarily understand this at all. Uh, you know, they're into, um, you know, the state runs things, um, uh, you know, uh, we need to tax um, uh, companies. We need to do, you know, basically uh, they are anti-free market, um, perhaps not quite as anti-free market as uh, the people in Brussels. Um, but, you know, the idea that um, th that we've sort of, you know, escaped with one bound from a terrible fate in Europe isn't necessarily the case because we have got the potential to screw it up ourselves big time, I'm afraid. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe for free to be notified when the rest of this interview is released.